In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what Ofqual have officially proposed for the 2021 GCSEs and A-level exams. This is no speculation and no opinions, just what's in that documentation. Then after you've been informed, then I will give my opinions and my speculation. Those are the rules that we're going by for this video. So let's get started. On the 2nd of July, Ofqual, that's the government's appointed organisation that deals with exams and assessment around the country, they released a document with a whole heap of information to do with what they're proposing for the coming year. They called it Consultation on Proposed Changes to the Assessment of GCSEs, AS and A-Levels in 2021, which is much shorter than I thought it would be considering that it's about 60 pages long. So. I've read it and I've done all the hard work so that you don't have to. And in my next few videos, I'll be going over some of the bits in it. So in this video, let's talk about what they are proposing. So number one, they're insisting that there will be no cancellations of exams for next year. Well, at least for most subjects in the traditional sense. Exams will happen next year, assessment will happen next year. And I'll get into what we mean exactly by that a bit later. That priority when putting these together is for students to progress to the next stage in their life. So they definitely want these exams to happen because they think that's the best way this can happen. They also want to assure that all the exams and assessments are as fair as possible. And to be fair, when considering and listening to some of your comments and seeing what loads of students had to say on the idea and the thought of cancelling the exams, that was an ongoing thing about is it fair for students from certain different backgrounds. And yeah, this may not necessarily be a bad decision, them sort of ruling out the cancellation. Um, I just realised I gave my opinion. I wasn't supposed to. I've already broken my own rules. Never mind. On to number two. Number two, one of the, thing, one of the things that they're proposing is that the organisations and companies that make the exams adapt their exams and adapt their courses to free up some of the teacher time. So here's a few examples. Removing spoken language assessments in GCSE English language, which saves students time and saves teaching time. Uh, allowing students to observe science experiments rather than doing it themselves. And quite importantly, especially for me as an art teacher, is that removing the external exam component of the art and design exam courses. So this is actually fairly logical because it's definitely a shame about losing these parts since they add some variety and, and try to teach the, um, the students in a much more broader and much more rounded way. But when it comes down to it, these if they were going to chop anything out, this sort of stuff is the stuff that they should chop out. Um, a speaking exam, we all speak daily. Our teachers correct us on our speaking daily. Or science experiments, we do science experiments lower down the school. You will get more chances to do it in coming years if you want to um, follow science as an actual subject that you're going to do for um, and a career that you're going to follow. So it does make sense to chop out these parts. They're not necessary and they don't they lean more towards, uh, they don't lean as much towards knowledge and stuff that you need to know to move forward. Yeah, I guess that means that I'm giving up. I'm not sure, I'm gonna share my opinion. It's just, it's just the best way to do it. I can't help it. Uh, third proposal. The third proposal is that they sample subject content in the question papers and increase the use of optional questions. So this reminds me of how English and history exams typically are, where you can literally ignore entire poems or texts and areas of history because you know that you'll have a choice on what you're going to have to answer within the exam. So you just revise for one section and completely ignore the other because you know you're going to get questions along those lines in the exams. So you only need to know that. It's a shame because it means that students will overall learn less not and less things and also it gives them less options when it comes to actually doing the exam but it still allows them to learn and apply the skills and know that they definitely have the no enough knowledge to pass those exams. So it works. This isn't a bad idea, it's a pretty good idea. And you know what else is a good idea? Subscribing to this channel so you get more information just like in this video. So why not do that now? So moving on to number four. Of course, fourth proposal is in response to, to request to change the length of exams and change the amount of exams that students take. And simply put, they said no. They say it causes too much trouble for schools, for disabled students, and can be a health and safety concern. In my opinion, be happy that this one didn't go through because I'm sure nobody would enjoy sitting a five hour exam, unless it's art, which is a 10 hour exam. But otherwise, I'm sure you wouldn't enjoy sitting a five hour maths exam. 
be happy that one didn't go through. Proposal number five. They consider giving students more information within the actual exams themselves, like equations, anthologies, and so on, which is a good idea, in my opinion, because for the majority of jobs that you do, you have access to the internet, you have access to your books, research, and things like that. So it reflects the real world to some degree. Because when you think about it, if a doctor in the middle of a surgery, the patient's gushing blood, and they have to make a quick decision, they can't really go and check their research materials, otherwise the person will die. So, yeah, I think a, I don't think it's a bad idea. Either way, they pretty much rejected it. Reason being that they said that upon doing research into it, students found it a, a distraction and it can mess with the way that students engage with their exams and their assessments in general. So they said, nope, we're not going to do that. So that's out of the window. Proposal number six, delaying exams. We spoke about this at length in another video. You can check that out. I'll link it in a card. They're still considering it. They're not sure how they're going to do it. In the document, they weigh up a, a bunch of different things that they could do, the effects that it will have. And really, to me, it just seems like they don't know what they're going to do with it. And like I said before, a few extra weeks will always be beneficial, but a few extra weeks of it cause a terrible ripple effect throughout the entire educational system is not a good thing. So I'm in mixed minds about it. And I think we might be in a better position if we don't delay exams. It might be better just to try and put in place some of the other stuff and leave the timing of the exams where they are so that things can carry on as normal for the years that follow. And that's it. Those are the six main things that they mentioned that they looked at and their main responses to it. Now I'm going to go into more detail in future videos, but for now, that's all we're going to cover. Overall, I'm actually quite happy with these proposals. Um, I know a lot of the students who follow me and watch my videos were in favor of canceling the exams. And I have done videos on, on those on canceling and changing them already, but I've heard a good amount of students who still favour the exams and they want them next year and their reasons are equally compelling. And to be honest, in this case where there's nothing stopping you guys from taking your exams next year, adjustments can be made to the exams, but there's nothing really stopping you from taking them in uh, 10 months time. So bearing that in mind, uh, if adjustments are made, it's probably better for everyone if you do take your exams. We'll cover that in another video. So then considering all this and considering that we're not going to get the exams cancelled as much as I sort of would have liked to have seen that, but I understand why they wouldn't do it because they've pretty much said that they're not going to do it. We need to make sure that they do it right. Um, so hopefully by the end of this consultation in a few weeks time, they will have come up with a good set of conclusions and decisions that will help them moving forward and which will work for everyone not just for a few elite, but for everyone, those who struggled to be educated during this hard time period and those who have special needs or who don't even go to school, they're homeschooled or learn privately. Hopefully it will serve all of you students, every single student in some way. Either way, we'll be waiting, we'll be watching and we'll see what happens when after the consultation is done. In the meantime, I'm going to keep breaking down this lengthy document for you. Next video on the 2021 exams will focus on Ofqual's table of subjects, which goes through every single subject saying exactly what changes they're going to make. So we're going to go, we're going to scroll through them, and I'm going to tell you exactly what they're proposing for each subject from art and design all the way down to, I don't even know what's at the end, psychology. So yeah, make sure that you don't miss it. And to make sure you don't miss it, make sure you subscribe and like this video, leave comments on your thoughts on these proposals. I'm really interested in finding out what you think of them. Um, and check out some of my other videos. They should be appearing on the screen now. There's more videos to do with this topic of exams and there's also some to do with anime, video gaming and art lessons as well. So be sure to check them out. And that's all for now. Until next time.